Hi guys, and thank you for coming back to MoveOverMike.com and our YouTube channel. And this has been a video series on order flow. So hopefully you've already watched the introduction video where we talked about order flow in general. And today we're going on to part two where we talk about price. Before we begin, we always like to start off with a little bit of our disclaimers. And in essence, it simply says, any investment decision you make is your own responsibility to trade your own risk. You can lose money in investing no matter what type you choose. The symbols, the strategies we talk about today are purely for educational purposes. Again, your, your money, your account, your choice. So again, this is our video series on order flow and we hope that by the end of this video series and we, we have a series of 10 minute videos uh, where we break it down and that you can take the the matrix green numbers and turn it into an edge not a system not a trading setup it's not a do do this do this but it is a mindset that we hope will help you uh, interact with the opportunity flow of the market better and that really comes to our quote today by paul samuelson where he says investing should be more like watching paint dry or watching grass grow and when people come to me and they say, hey, I want to learn how to trade or, you know, how do you do that? I always tell them training is not hard. It's not. What's hard is discipline. What's hard is controlling your emotions because it's not as easy as you might think to just sit and wait for the market to come to you. You see, the market doesn't mind taking advantage of you. That's how so many people make so much money is because the market takes advantage of these novice traders, these new traders who are just throwing money at it. So you, in return, should not mind taking advantage of the market. Well, how do you take advantage of the market? You develop an edge. You develop uh, a strategy, a mindset, a way to interact with the market where the odds are in your favor. High probability trading. That's how uh, our, our uh, casino poker players, that's how they make money. They always talk about you know the odds of per each hand. Well, trading is the same way. You need to know your odds. You need to know your edge. And when your edge is not in your favor, or the opportunity is not in your favor, and the market is not doing what you want, you should sit on your hands and watch the paint dry. Watch the grass grow. And that's hard. It is for me, at least. Because, you know, you want to get into that addictive trading the ebb and flows of everything. But that's not where the money is to be made. The money is to be made by developing edge and taking advantage of that edge. And that's what order flow does. It allows you to read the market and get a gauge for what people are doing. So to do that, we've broken the market down into a series of videos to help you become better with order flow. And hopefully that will allow you to, again, develop your edge. So we already hopefully have watched the video that was an introduction to order flow in general. Today, we're going to focus in on price and price action as what we used to call it back in the day. But now it's called order flow. Next video will be about volume. Then we'll talk about the auction process. And really the auction process is really the whole thing, really the, the, the real core of order flow, market profile, vault profile, volume profiling. But it's gonna be third in our series. Then we're gonna talk about value and talk about when the market is balanced versus imbalance. And then some key order flow terms, iceberg orders, absorption, and exhaustion. That's really key to understanding order flow. And then finally, we'll try to put it all together by, again, not necessarily giving a system of do this, do that, but it will help you develop a mindset on how to read order flow and, again, how to interact with the opportunity flow of the market. So we do have some terms that we want to talk about, and again, in this video on price. So we've got the bid, the ask, the current price, the spread, and liquidity. The bid is basically what someone's willing to pay. Now, there are a series of bid prices, and we'll show that in our next series. The ask is what someone's willing to sell or uh, their, their um, shares for. Now, what's confusing about that is what someone's willing to pay. That means the buyers go over to the bid. Really, the, I'm sorry, the buyers go over to the ask, and they, the buyers are buying from sellers. For every buyer, there's a seller. Once you sell into the market, you've got to buy it back. Once you buy into the market, you got to sell into the back, sell it back. And that's where it gets a little bit confusing, but hopefully we can clear that up for you on the next slide. The current price is very simple. It's just whatever the last, last transaction is at, that's the current price. The spread is going to be the difference between the bid and the ask. 
um, in our futures. You know, it could be a little bit different. Sometimes it's in pennies, sometimes it's in quarters, like the ES. Um, in stocks and Forex, you know, you have a little bit big, bigger spread sometimes. And sometimes the spread can move during volatile moments. Um, news releases or earnings, sometimes the spread will get a little bit bigger. Um, why that happens is a, a, another video. And finally, liquidity is the liquidity is the number of shares at each price level. So to try to put that into perspective for you, when we were talking about the bid and the ask, so the best ask is this is these are all sellers over here, and they're, uh, the best ask is twenty one sixty eight. If you wanted to buy, you had to buy at the best ask these seller prices. If you wanted to sell. This is where someone's willing to accept. Now, what's confusing about that is you think these are the buyers and these sellers, and that is true. However, if neither side is willing to interact, and we'll talk about that in our next slide, then price isn't going to go anywhere. So in order for the buyers to really buy something, unless they're willing to, to uh, sit and wait, they have to come over and interact with the sellers. Typically on a dome, you see there's 10 levels that are shown, and then there are orders up here and down here, but they typically on most domes only show you 10 levels at a time. And when it says 10.7, it's saying add up all this and you get 10.7. Add up all this and you get 11 4K. And when you compare the two, they're saying there's 52% buyers and 48% sellers. That really doesn't mean anything. Some people say that that means there's more buyers and sellers. Eh, yeah, but you know I wouldn't place a, a trade based upon that information. Um, now, we said the spread is the difference between the best ask and the best bid. So in the ES, you can see there's there's quarters. And again, it really depends on the instrument that you're looking at to determine what their spread's going to be. But they can, again, grow based upon volatility. Finally, liquidity is the number of shares or offers or orders at each price level. This doesn't mean that there's 290 sellers. It just means that there are 290 offers. In order for price to go up, we had to get rid of this liquidity. These buyers had to agree to come over to this price and eat that up to get it to move up here. Or these sellers, in order to get price to go down, had to agree to come leave their side and come over here and push price down. And the best way I guess I can explain that is to give you another visual here on the next slide. So what's important in regards to um, price is not what price, but liquidity. Liquidity is very important. So, you know, again, this could be $10, $5,000, $28,000, whatever. What's important is liquidity. So let's say there are three here and there's one, two, three, four here, only two here, one here, and then two three, four, five orders there. Then on this side, we've got, let's do three here and another three here and only one here and we'll put five down here at the bottom. So what's important is that in order for price to move, so right now, here's our current price right here. These are orders. If you want to get caught up in the terminology that these are, each one of these are sellers, each could be one order, it could be one guy with three, it could be three, one order, it could be two and one, it doesn't matter the combination. For right now, we're just saying that there are three orders waiting to sell. There are three buyers, three orders waiting to buy. Price is just going to sit here and do nothing until either these guys decide, okay, I do want to sell, um, but I want to sell uh, down here. That would be a market order um, because they're not waiting for their price. They're, uh, they're, they're leaving the passive state of waiting and they're now becoming aggressive and pushing to say, all right, I'm not willing to go down to their price. Similarly, these buyers are sitting there waiting, they're passive. In order to move price, they have to become aggressive and decide that they're willing to go over here and move out their price. 
So what happens? Well, um, you know, again, in a, in a given ebbs and flow of the market, where the market is always looking for value. But let's go with what something more people know, earnings or the FOMC or a Trump tweet, <laughs> whatever is going on. Something comes into the market. We call it market moving news. Let's go with um, FOMC. They decide they're going to cut interest rates. Well, if they're going to cut interest rate, that typically moves the ES higher and the gold goes down. But that's another conversation. So that's good news for the buyers. FOMC is going to cut interest rate and they're going to cut by 100, you know, something ridiculous. And so now that means these passive buyers may now decide that they might be becoming aggressive. So each one of these three buyers are now willing to go and buy up the these three orders. And since so now price will move from here. And now price will move up to here. Because our buyers moved from here and they move up here. And typically what happens is that every, uh, more, you know, more liquidity comes in behind them. But again, it's an FOMC rake. And so they're, they're even more excited. And so they're willing to even eat up, be aggressive. And the, these sellers here, they're willing to take that price. And so now price moves from there and it moves up another level to here. So what's important is for you to understand is the way, pr price moves is through the aggressive action of buyers and sellers. Now, again, we're going to, in a couple of videos, we're going to talk about the auction process and, you know, the supply and demand and all of that. That's not what today, today is just about price action and the price and how price moves. And that is how pr price moves. Um, we could reverse that. I said, race, erase, 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 erase all of that. But we'll, we'll keep price right there. Let's put some, uh, you know, some, those buyers are up here now. And now, uh, uh, instead, the FNC decides they're going to raise rates by 100. Well, that's going to send the market down. Um, and now these sellers may decide that they're willing to be aggressive and lead their passive limit orders. Cause that's what liquidity is typically just limit orders. Orders sitting, waiting to be enacted. Remember, what is a limit order? A limit order is a, a order waiting to happen at a specific price. A market order says happen now. So these are typically limit orders waiting for price to come get them. In order for price to come get them, these buyers have to put in market orders to move up the market to get it. But it's a rate cut. So now the sellers are willing to be aggressive and they're going to come down here and take out these buyers that were sitting limit orders. And now price will move from there down to here. And if they're even more aggressive, they'll come down, sellers will come take up these orders. And now price will move down again from here down to the next level. And again, we know we're, we're not having a conversation about how FNCs are interpreted. We're having a conversation of how price moves and how that, how, and why we as order flow traders are concerned about that and why we're looking at liquidity at each level. And we talked about one of the last videos, we're going to talk about our iceberg orders and exhaustion and uh, absorption. But, you know, because just because these three sellers decide to come over here, that doesn't always mean that price is going to move because what happens, what, what would happen? Let's, um, let's erase for a second. I, I will give you a quick, uh, uh, not an example, but again, we'll go in more detail later. Erase all of that. And um, we will have, so what do we say? Um, you know, the, the rate cut's gonna come down and these sellers decide, hey, I, I wanna get, take these up. You know, 
But the problem is that these buyers still say that this is a good price. So even though these sellers have come over here aggressively to take out uh, this price, and I, I'm sorry, my phone rang off there for a second, <laughs> but buyers still think it's a good price. And so new buyers either come in here or sometimes it's not even a new buyer. It's the same buyer. And even though the sellers are coming over and eating up what they have to offer their limit orders, that doesn't mean that more buyers or the same buyer can't say, nope, I'm going to put another order in there and another seller can come in here and put in. And what we're saying is even though there were only three orders there offered in the beginning, we now have nine, 10 orders being off, being taken off there. Whoops at that price. And that's what we call an iceberg order. And again, I'll go into more detail later. But what's important about that? After so many attempts by the sellers to move price down and prices being absorbed, they may give up. And now the buyers, uh, whoop, wrong color, the buyers can come attack the, these sellers because the sellers are now exhausted and they can move price up. That's a very simple explanation and we can go into more details in the other videos about we're going to talk about absorption and iceberg and exhaustion but what's important is for you to understand again how price moves and price moves when the sellers come over here to the buyers or the buyers go over to the sellers and sometimes it's just as simple as these buyers taking out what the seller limit orders have but every now and then because again the auction process, which we'll talk about later, every now and then value is hit. And as price moves up, buyers no longer see it as value and sellers do. So more sellers will come in to keep the price from going higher because they see value. So hopefully what you will find uh, what's important in terms of price action and order flow is how the market moves and the market moves with market orders. The aggression a market order, believe it or not, can be considered an aggressive order because the buyers are willing to take any price because a market is any price. We hope we get a good feel, but the market moves over buyers going over and taking the price that the sellers are willing to give or the sellers coming over and taking the price that the buyers will give. That, that aggression of a market order is what moves the market. So we hope that you'll be able to identify the benefits by seeing that the order flow allows you to identify our current market participants and it allows us to gauge the strength about who is participating. That does it for our video on price. Our next video is going to talk about volume and we're going to, again, as you guys know, move away from traditional volume by time, but we're going to look more about volume at price. You can follow us on any of all of our social media. It's move up with Mike. And as you guys know, if you're looking for any coaching, michaelglass.com slash coaching for our trading room that we're going to ready to set up. There's our link. Sign up for it. We'll give you, that's going to be basically a free trial as we get things up and running so that we can get the feedback so we can make sure that we're giving what people want. And then finally, you guys know Tops Debt allows people to get funded. Doesn't really matter what you're trading, order flow or not, if you can't pull the trigger, you're not gonna be able to do anything. So as I said before, as we start the video off, it's not trading that's hard, it's controlling your emotions, it's discipline, it's the mindset that's hard. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.